Thank you for attending the Cannabis Investor Webcast. I would like to thank our platinum sponsors, MJIC, known as the Marijuana Investment Company, Naturally Splendid Enterprises Limited, Nemus Bioscience Incorporated, American Green Incorporated, and Technical 420. To view Technical 420's latest stock reports, please visit www.technical420.com. Our presenter today is Craig Goodwin, CEO, Director, and Founder of Naturally Splendid Enterprises Limited. Craig, give me a couple of seconds and I will make you a presenter. Thank you very much. I'd like to take, start off by uh, thanking you for giving me the opportunity to, to talk to everyone today. It's, uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to, to be here. Uh, over the next uh, 20 minutes or so, I'd like to uh, go over the Naturally Splendid presentation. Um, if we go to the, the third uh, page, the uniqueness of the Naturally Splendid opportunity is really one as a multifaceted investment vehicle and it revolves around the endless opportunity of what we believe is the world's most valuable yet ironically misunderstood plant and that's cannabis sativa. And our personal history in, in this space uh, we were Canada's first publicly traded hemp cannabis science and superfood company. Originally we started off with a retail line and that was built around uh, the hemp superfood. We launched a number of products. Uh, it was hemp seed and hemp pro protein primarily. Uh, and That was in October of 2013 that we launched that line. But we also wanted to have a larger upside potential. In that area we established a biotech division and that in turn can be separated in two, into two areas. Omega Nutrition, uh, we have extraordinary extraction and formulation technologies surrounding that opportunity. And something probably more familiar with your listeners is the cannabinoid nutraceutical opportunity. We truly have revolutionary extraction and formulation technologies and of course I'll go into more detail as we go through this presentation. But the investment opportunity is we want to be a global leader in the development and the commercialization of cannabinoid-based technologies and cannabinoid-infused products. Um, Naturally Splendid has strengthened the retail distribution area, uh, having launched our first brand. There are, are additional retail brands to follow, and we are in fact gaining increasing retail shelf space month to month. But we partnered with Boreal Technologies because of the proprietary and patent pending technologies once again based in the Omega Extraction and Formulation Technologies and based in the Cannabinoid Extraction and Formulation Technologies. It has opened up many opportunities, uh, food and beverage, nutraceutical and in fact eventually pharmaceutical opportunities. So these multiple revenue streams, we believe that you can mitigate risk and you can diversify if you bring in multiple revenue streams. So we believe that we're not a marijuana company or a hemp company, but in fact a cannabis sativa company. And you can see that many of the, uh, the columns under marijuana and the columns underneath hemp uh, are identical um, except for the, o the omega protein based foods. So we have one added layer on the hemp side that's immediate and has very few, if any, regulatory encumbrances. So Cannabis Sativa, I just wanted to take this one step back and many of your listeners will be familiar with the medical marijuana space, the marijuana space in general, but really the species above that is uh, Cannabis Sativa. And the one difference between marijuana and industrial hemp really is the cannabinoid THC. There's another 70 plus cannabinoids that can be uh, marijuana and industrial hemp share. So what I'm saying is you can uh, extract many of the nutraceutical and pharmaceutical components from an industrial hemp plant the same as you can from marijuana um, short of THC of course. Um, in Canada, uh, industrial hemp has been grown legally since 1988. Uh, we are the leaders in food grade hemp uh, products in the world. Uh, the United States, many people will be familiar now, is coming online to grow industrial hemp. 
Uh, Colorado, I believe, is one state. Kentucky, Tennessee. Uh, there's some talk of Oregon, Washington. Uh, we are becoming more hemp friendly in the United States, which is the flip-flop of what we did here in Canada. In Canada, we uh, established a industrial hemp market and continue to, to move towards legalizing marijuana-type products. Um, in the United States, you seem to lead with the marijuana and are now following back with industrial hemp. Ultimately, though, it's the same plant, cannabis sativa, and our technologies work equally as well on both sides of that spectrum. So a little more for cannabis sativa. It is a multifaceted plant. Uh, we can use it for the food, industrial fiber, oils, medicines, plastics, cosmetics. Some people are calling 25,000 uses for industrial hemp. People are now saying up to 50,000 uses for industrial hemp. But the trick is to secure patented biotechnologies that have created opportunities to, revenue, or to, to maximize the revenue opportunities of this plant. And that's where we believe we're head and shoulders above our, our competition is that our technology takes what is already an outstanding opportunity and brings more commercially viable opportunities through science and technology. And this is a quote from Mr. Charlie Brink. And Charlie is the founder um, and chairman of Boreal Technologies. He's invested in excess of $15 million, nearing closer to $18.5 million in the science and technology surrounding cannabis sativa. And Charlie's quote is, and I'd just like to read it, what we've discovered in the last few years is that cannabis sativa is a wholly misunderstood plant. Our team has identified compounds within this plant that have great medicinal and nutritional properties, and many of these have translated into unique ingredients that most people haven't seen before. And that was the basis and the strategy that Charlie employed to move forward uh, with his science and technology. Uh, he invested, as I said, $18.5 million of his own money behind this. And I do like to point out Charlie is an extremely successful businessman, having been the founder of a functional beverage company that he grew from zero in revenue. In the first three years of operation, they accumulated a billion dollars in sales. And in the fourth year, they were able to accumulate almost a billion dollars in one year in a functional beverage. So in short, Charlie Brink was a founder of a functional beverage company that went from zero dollars in sales to accumulating two billion in just four years of operation. So from the beginning, we referred to our retail hemp line, and you're seeing some examples of that, of the Natero line. As mentioned before, we launched that in October of 2013. We're carried by Canada's largest natural products distributor. They're called Purity Life. We have three other additional distributors. In total, our four distributors in Canada can access between 10 and 12,000 retail, uh, uh, retail locations. We are looking at U.S. expansion right now. The rough number everybody throws around is the U.S. is 10 times the market as Canada. Uh, so you can see that the opportunity, if it's 12,000 retail outlets in Canada, is significantly larger in the United States. And then when we talked about re additional regions globally, of course, Asia would be a target of ours. The, the growing middle class has created opportunities that were never available before in disposable income and especially health-related products. So we've started in Canada. We do believe in a conservative approach. We looked after our own backyard first. We will be expanding to the United States. We've hired one boutique type distributor who has access to Washington State as we are just north of that in British Columbia. And we will begin penetrating that market in 2015. The second line that we're about to launch and we announced recently was Positive FX. Uh, it is a hemp based pet care line. Uh, the reason why this particular segment interests us is that uh, uh, pet owners spend upwards of $1,000 a year per pet. Uh, it's an industry that's worth almost $48 billion in the United States. The latest data we had came out of 2010. Those numbers only continue to increase. So hemp, is not, hemp oils are not only good for human consumption, but in fact there's a massive opportunity in the pet care line, and we are launching our first products that will be available April 1st, through a company called Positive Effects, which is a wholly owned 
brand underneath the Naturally Splendid label. Um, well, the important part of this is we talked about Purity Life being the largest natural products distributor in Canada. We are negotiating with them right now to begin launching positive effects through their retail outlets um, and we expect uh, traction to, to take place um, a lot quicker than our initial launch because we have now been experienced in the Canadian retail market for well over a year now. Sorry, I went one past, uh, past, but going back to our expanding retail lines, this is just building on the retail brand strategy. Now that the heavy lifting is done and we are established with prominent Canadian distributors, we of course want to have more width in our hemp lines and then go down vertically and offer additional um, uh, extended lines, maybe other superfoods, and we also have an opportunity to purchase or joint venture with existing retail lines. So we have the best of nature. We believe that cannabis sativa is a plant that has more to offer than any other plant that we're certainly aware of, but it's still a commodity. We're on the retail shelf and we're competing with more established hemp lines and we fight for our retail space every day. We defend our retail space every day. And we're gaining traction. We are, we're definitely gaining momentum in that area but we believe we can accelerate that momentum by adding science as a differentiator. And this is where we came in touch with Boreal Technologies. Um, and I'll explain what Boreal is. If you go one step back, we talked about Charlie Brink as the founder of Boreal. Um, and I'll go to that stage right now. Um, so Boreal was formed in 2011. Charlie Brink and David Race uh, are the main players behind that company. They relocated to the grounds of the University of British Columbia, which is located in Vancouver, uh, about three years ago. They develop and they own patent pending processes uh, that are scientifically proven for su superior functional ingredients in the cannabis sativa space. They provide innovative product solutions and they in fact hold five licenses from Health Canada that allows us to carry on research and development in industrial hemp and medical marijuana. These licenses in Canada are very hard to come by and it definitely separates ourselves from the pretenders way up there to a contender and in fact players in the industry. So how do we access and how do we partner with Boreal? Their parent company is called Full Spectrum Laboratories or, or FSL for short. And on November 20th, we entered into an agreement with Full Spectrum. And what we licensed were global rights to omega extraction and formulation technologies. And we also licensed <clears throat> um, extraordinary CBD extraction and formulation technologies. Under the licensing agreement, there's been a transfer of a number of technologies and certain patents like the Hemp Omega patent, which I will discuss I'll discuss Hemp Omega in more detail, but we do own IP now within this agreement with FSL. So the Omega opportunity I'm going to address first and then we'll step into the cannabinoid opportunity. The Omegas are extracted from the industrial hemp plant, not from marijuana. We have secured technology that transforms Omegas from oils, which are difficult to, uh, to market commercially because of the limited use and we take that nutrient dense oil and turn it into highly bioavailable water soluble powders which enhances the marketing opportunities because you can use the products in a far greater range of opportunities. It's applicable to a wide range of plant based oils so we're not just restricted to hemp but of course being a cannabis sativa talk today we have isolated and identified hemp omega as a main priority for these purposes. But in fact, we can use not only hemp, but flax or canola or chia, and in fact, algae as our base oil for omega extraction. The research into this, into this technology has shown that the end products are more bioavailable, meaning how good your body can utilize the nutrients, and sustainable, not how sustainable it is envir environmentally, but how sustainable that that nutrient remains in your body. It's not unusual for the nutrients that your body takes in to last for 90 minutes or less 
and then it's discharged from your body in any number of ways, but our products have showed to last in your system for 10 hours and more. So not only is your body able to, uh, to take the nutrients up in a more bioavailable, efficient manner, but that more effective product now lasts longer in your system, creating a synergistic health effect with Omega products that simply isn't rivaled in the market today. We've done two tests. Uh, people always ask me, do more testing need to be done? Of course, but initial testing by the BC Cancer Research Agency. So I think that's British Columbia, by the way, Cancer Research Agency. So I think we can agree that this is, is a reputable testing result. They have found that our products are four times more bioavailable and they sustain in the body for, as I mentioned, 10 hours or more. And we conducted a second test at the University of Manitoba. And the, although the first test was human um, related, the second one was a test that we did with poultry. And we did a controlled study with a Dr. James House, and he was able to feed a, a controlled diet of hemp omega, which is our omega products derived from hemp turned into a powder. And it resulted in 637% more omega in eggs than regular poultry feed, and also translated into 400% more omega in the meat of the chickens while reducing the trans fats. So today after we finish this talk, if you go to the grocery store and you walk down the produce area or the dairy section, you look at the price of eggs, they might be two or three dollars, and then if you look at the top shelf, you'll see omega enriched eggs, and they'll be anywhere from four to six dollars. The omega market, 80% uh, of North Americans are looking for omega nutrition and are fully prepared to pay for it. Large international global type companies are looking for omega ingredients to add to existing formulations to enhance sales. And we see this time and time again where people are, a are advertising or marketing omega nutrition but really offering very little value because of the minimal um, omega nutrition that ends up in the end product, whereas ours is scientifically proven to be more, bio more bioavailable, more sustainable, and in fact offering or providing the omega nutrition that other people are marketing, we're providing real omega nutrition. And this is why the Omega Nutrition is so important. It's a $35 billion a year industry. It's growing from some estimates, double digits. Uh, the problem is the growth of the Omega market is so significant that where most of the Omegas are derived from right now is from the ocean, approximately 90%. But the ocean can no longer sustain the Omega demands that are put on it globally. As the demand for omega nutrition increases, there is no doubt that the supply of fish in the ocean continues to decrease. So the omega model as it exists today is no longer sustainable, yet we need to find a way to deliver omega nutrition to this massive market. And our technology allows for a plant-based omega that is more bioavailable and more sustainable to begin taking market share away from ocean-based products which are also being called into question because of heavy metal contamination, mercury contamination, pollutants. There's concerns about the recent nuclear disaster in Japan affecting the, the quality uh, of um, omegas in the ocean. And by growing sustainable plant-based products, we can now be a, an environmentally friendly omega source. It's not only just for humans. And if it was just for human, we cover food and beverage and nutraceutical applications, in fact, topical applications. It can be used for pet food and pet care products. And we are also uh, looking at, as, as, you've told, as we've indicated, the feed stock opportunity for the, uh, the poultry study is just the first one that we've done. I can also tell you that we've announced publicly that we are conducting a pet food study right now at the Brooks Food Development Center. Uh, that's a, it's a government facility located in the province of Alberta, and we are currently testing our hemp omega in pet food formulations, 
and we fully expect the same results that we received from the BC Cancer Research Agency and that we received from the University of Manitoba, that we have um, consistently duplicated those same astounding results in all testing that we have done, and we expect that now to cross over into the pet food opportunity. So the present, how far off is this omega opportunity? I am very pleased to tell you that Nature's Health Products Canada Corp, who is a member of the POS group of companies in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, is representing us globally. Uh, POS group of companies have 30 plus years in omega formulation and extraction technology experience. They have over 600 global clients. They operate out of a 54,000 square foot, state-of-the-art, highly regulated HACCP 9001 ISO GMP facility. Um, for us to replace that facility would be about $125 million. What Naturally Splendid has been able to do through this strategic alignment with, with Nature's Health Products is to access this facility without any capital cost up front, so no capital expenditure, and no delay during construction. We are in the global Omega business today, gentlemen. So that wraps up our Omega opportunity, and now I want to talk about the future. And I think with the audience that we have today, we're not talking the future three years out or even one year out, but the future is, this might sound contradictory, the future is today and what it is going to bring in the distant future. The regulatory environments are changing, if not daily, then certainly monthly. We are continue to see a regulatory environment that is embracing the opportunities surrounding this incredible plant, but there does remain that one big stigma that if it is a prescription that you're offering, doctors and physicians are still having a problem uh, recommending or prescribing a smokable prescription. If we were to use Colorado as an example, when the medical marijuana was first legalized, my statistics show that over 90% of consumption was through smoking. But now we're seeing that demographics change. And apparently, uh, or not apparently, but according to our last statistics, we have seen over 35% of marijuana consumption in edibles and other types of consumables other than smoking. So this is where Naturally Splendid USA comes in. The company was established in Denver, Colorado to access the biggest market in the United States right now. And we have not only cannabinoid ready products today that are CBD or cannabidiol based, but we have the world's first water soluble cannabinoid patent. And I want to stop here for a second because the one main problem that is slowing down the, the expansion of pharmaceutical nutraceutical or cosmeceutical products, even recreational for that matter, is even dosages. Many of us, if not most of us, have read the article from the New York Times reporter who traveled out to Denver. She tried a piece of a chocolate bar that was THC in it, no reaction, tried a second or third. By the time she ate the fourth, where all the THC was concentrated because of the difficulties in even distribution of that product, she ended up in a comatose uh, state for two days, fetal position, couldn't leave her room. That is a problem of dosage, and there are regulatory changes coming in the very near future that are going to demand of, of THC and, cannabino and CBD products to be able to guarantee consistent dosage. And our belief is the technologies out there today do not allow for companies to be consistent and confident in even dosages and are going to get caught in this regulatory um, uh, challenge if they don't address it. Our water-soluble cannabinoid technology is the first technology to market that can address this even efficacious, efficacious measurable, consistent dosages. And that's what we believe puts us at the front of the bulk cannabinoid provider scenario. Because of this, we, that, because of the water-soluble cannabinoids, it will provide multiple revenue streams, including food and beverage, 
nutraceutical, cosmeceutical applications, and eventually pharmaceutical. I sometimes leave the pharmaceutical side out because people immediately jump to, is this 10 years away and hundreds of millions of dollars? It's impossible to say. The pharmaceutical side is not my main priority. We like the nutraceutical model where we can capture much of the revenue stream that are revenue prices that a pharmaceutical product can, but get to market immediately instead of 10 years into the future. So how do we run Naturally Splendid USA? And this is one of the most important pages in the entire presentation. And I encourage all of you, uh, hopefully it's up on our website now, to look at David Race. He is the president of Naturally Splendid USA. David has held global senior level positions with distinguished pharmaceutical companies, including Pfizer, GlaxoSmithKline, and Novartis. He had a 25-year global success, successfully career in the pharmaceutical business, and he left that to join Charlie Brink in this functional beverage company. And although Charlie was the visionary and the founder behind the functional beverage company that grew from $100 million to $1 billion a year in two years, David was the COO. He built 12 distribution centers in just under two years to supply the sophisticated and exploding um, sales revenue targets. Uh, $1 billion a year of product shipped globally is a massive task to undertake, and David was able to absorb the challenge and, in fact, roll this out that over two years that company was growing, that they worked for, that they were senior officers with grew at 100% a quarter for two years straight. After they left the, after Charlie Brink and David Race together left the functional beverage company, they looked for the next business opportunity and they were one of the visionaries that went to Colorado and were there at the regulatory stage. They participated in many of the hearings. They in fact helped, maybe they didn't design, but certainly provided significant input and were active in, in, in everything regulatory as medicinal marijuana came on stream in Colorado in the very first days. <clears throat> and so early, in fact, that David designed, built, and operated one of Colorado's first fully compliant legal grows. It was a 28,000 square foot highly automated facility. It, in fact, had video monitoring that government offices could turn on cameras and watch the operations. And in fact, the government at uh, several levels in Colorado would bring dignitaries through David's facility to show what the future of medicinal marijuana should look like in the state of Colorado. And it was used as a model for how to build the industry in that state. Um, on the back end of that was a analytical, almost 6,000 square feet of analytics where they did testing of their grow. Uh, they turned that into a research and devel development opportunity, but quite honestly, the science that they were developing was beginning to outstrip the, the, the regulatory environment of the United States of the day. So that's when they picked up the labs, uh, sold off the grow, and brought 11 US-based scientists up to the University of British Columbia where they established Boreal Technologies and continued the research and development under the licenses that I described earlier. The revenue streams, we, there are nutraceutical, there's definitely bioscience in the agricultural side, and there's pharmaceutical. For today's purposes, I think we should focus on the nutraceutical because those are opportunities that are available to us immediately. And there's, of course, we can all read together, foods and beverage and supplements, there's infant formulas, meal replacements, pet foods, and livestock. We are active in all those categories. And I want to draw a, correlate, the, a line or connect the dots for you, is that David and Charlie created a functional beverage company doing a billion dollars a year in just four years. And on the second item down is beverages. Put functional beverage in front of that. And anyone who thinks we're not interested in that industry has not been following our story closely enough because David has already formulated cannabinoid-based uh, beverages. Um, we are currently looking at several formulas ourselves. We are in the state of Colorado. We have a U.S. presence there. David is, in fact, the president, and none of that is by accident. 
So the nutraceutical application, we all know the THC. Most of us will know CBD and cannabidiol. We're all familiar, or most of us will be, with Charlotte's Web and the absolutely amazing opportunities just in the child seizure scenario itself. This medicine needs to be brought to market immediately. We will hear that more testing needs to be done. Absolutely. It doesn't work for everybody. Does any pharmaceutical product work for everybody? Does more science and research need to be done? Yes. I agree with all of that. But in the meantime, this product needs to get to the people that need it the most. And because of our water-soluble cannabinoid technology, we will be the first to market with several products that, can F that will have efficacious, measurable, consistent dosages and take the guessing out of this medicine and provide a more nutraceutical, more nutraceutical, reliable product. And we believe that is what will drive top-line sales. There's many other cannabinoids. And if you check a look at the wheel, in addition to CBD and THC, that, that can treat and have the potential to treat many, many ailments. And we're just beginning to scratch the surface of what this incredible plant has to offer. But any time you extract a cannabinoid from this plant, you will have the same problem. It's a gooey, sticky, honey-like substance that is very hard to work with and very difficult to disperse evenly in any product. I know I'm beating a dead horse a little bit, but our water-soluble cannabinoid technology addresses this, which allows me to roll into the next slide. And this is GW Pharma. In some of their literature that you can find online, GW Pharma will state that a water-soluble cannabinoid is difficult, if not downright impossible. Uh, they use a dual-chamber alcohol-based spray that you spray in your mouth, Sativex or Sativex. Canada was the first country worldwide to license that product or allow that product to be sold as a prescription in Canada. In last year, I think 2014, uh, GW Pharma did about $4 million in recurring revenue of Sativex. They had significant research and development one-time um, uh, revenue in the $35 million range, so they did do $40 million but really the recurring revenue was $4 million, and that company is a $1.4 billion market cap, and it's sustained over a billion dollars, has been as high as almost $2 billion for a significant amount of time now, and that is because the global demand for cannabinoid-based products is insatiable. There's simply not enough product out there to, to satisfy today's demands, Never mind as the products become more reliable and the increased market that that will bring to companies like Naturally Splendid. So GW Pharma is having challenges with effectiveness of Sativex. They've said so in their own literature. We believe our technology will um, enhance the, the qualities of this product because we do not have to use alcohol, which deteriorates the, the usefulness of cannabinoids. I state at the bottom one more time in very bold letters, because this is very important, that we have the world's first water-soluble cannabinoid patent. It's highly disruptive. It's a highly disruptive opportunity because it's taking science in this space where very few have traveled before. So we look at the private companies, and I just bring up Dixie Botanical. They are probably the leading company in the state of Colorado as far as uh, cannabinoid-infused products, both on the THC and CBD side. Uh, a lot of their growth, um, is, is, I believe, is challenged because it's just getting raw CBD bulk material in. Uh, I think that a efficacious, reliable, high-quality quality cannabinoid product, CBD uh, initially, will be of great interest to Dixie. Uh, David has had experience working with Dixie Botanicals in the, in the past. Uh, we see them as a very successful company. We have an opportunity to private label products ourselves and compete with Dixie or be a bulk cannabinoid provider, much the same as we want to be a bulk omega provider to existing formulations and products. We can, we can transfer that same business model into the cannabinoid opportunity. And once again, our initial um, um, 
company was established in Colorado. We are looking at Oregon right now. There's a conference coming up within the week that we will be attending so we can assess the opportunities in the state of Oregon as well. So the market opportunities. In Canada, the cannabis market is a $2.6 billion opportunity in the next couple of years, in next year. In the United States, I think this is small, but it's $10 billion at least in 2019. The global, and, and both those have regulatory challenges, but the regulatory environment is improving. Where what we can ex access today is the functional, the global functional food market. And that's what we do with our hemp-based product line. So you ask why we still work so hard to get our product on retail shelves, and the reason is the global functional food market is $240 billion. Inside of that, the Omega market, as I've established earlier, is a $34 billion opportunity, and we have a presence inside one of the, the state-of-the-art facilities um, available in Canada with our partners at POS Biosciences. We are fully immersed in a multi-billion dollar global opportunity with multiple revenue streams, multiple products, but the amazing part of this, it's based around one plant, cannabis sativa, and one core technology that we've licensed from Boreal Technologies that allows us to extract and formulate a wide range of, pro range of products to access and penetrate this immensely lucrative market. So how do we get all these products and sciences and technologies to access this incredible market right now? You have to have a wide team. I've been involved in the public markets for over 30 years. I was a senior sales executive with Canada's largest outdoor advertising firm, the Jim Pattison Group. Uh, I have a venture capital background and I'm a founder of Naturally Splendid. My business partner with Naturally Splendid and co-founder is Brian Carson. He's the VP of operations. He has built several retail operations, bought, sold them. It was his vision initially that brought the idea of hemp forward, and together we brought the company public in March of 2013. Our CFO is Chuck Jenkins over 30 years of ex experience in the public markets. So we have an experienced public market CFO that keeps us current of all regulatory issues. Uh, you heard me describe David, David Race, senior pharmaceutical executive, um, entrepreneur with a functional beverage company, successful marijuana grow uh, businessman, and now a very successful research and development company with Boreal. Charlie Brink, is a formal, former attorney. Uh, he looks at everything regulatory. He is immersed in that activity every single day. And if there is a company in the marijuana space that is not dedicating significant time to everything regulatory, they, I my belief, will have challenges because this is a changing environment. And you need to be uh, apprised of, of conditions as they change in some cases on a day-to-day -day basis. And Charlie Brink, he is stationed in Tampa, Florida, but he's the director of Naturally Splendid. He's a founder of a functional beverage company, Monavi, that was doing a billion dollars a year in four years. He is a successful operator of the first legal grow in Colorado. He is the chairman and founder of Boreal Technologies, and he is a director and it's with men with the visionary skills of Charlie Brink that will lead naturally splendid to levels that very few companies will ever attain. Peter Hughes is also an experienced public markets guy. The deal that he's involved with, we, um, we bought our CPC from, from Peter Hughes. He was so enamored with what we were doing, he remained as a director of the company. He's also a director of a company called Kelso. Uh, they started at 40 cents a share. They are an industrial company. I believe their revenues within three years was $40 million plus, and their stock hit about $7. It's a company called Kelso. I believe it's trading in the 4 to $5 range. Once again, a very successful public markets person in the person of Peter Hughes. The last director you see there is Russ Crawford. He's a director. He has been with Naturally Splendid since the very beginning when we were a private company. Russ is the current president of the Canadian Hemp Trade Alliance. So anything agronomics, uh, we go to Russ. 
He is one of the preeminent hemp experts in North America, if not the world. Russ has experience with some of the largest agronomic companies in the world, including Cargill and Alberta Wheat Pool, and he sits on our board of directors and is very active in guiding us in the challenges of supply and demand with an agricultural crop. Once again, if you don't have somebody of this pedigree on your team, you are exposed to some dangers. And our leadership team is supported by an advisory board of four right now. There will be um, additions to it in the very near future, but to give you an idea of the quality of people that this science and technologies is attracting, uh, Dave Edo, who is the CEO of the BC Dairy Association, is on an advisory board and is very interested in how our Omega products would work in the dairy industry. We have done some very early modeling, and I do want to say this is only modeling, so this is just for projection purposes, but 1% of the liquid dairy market infused with our Omega technologies or Omega powders has a revenue potential of five to seven million dollars a year at a 1% penetration in Canada alone. So of course, Dave is very interested to see how we can um, transfer our technology not only from liquid dairy, but into yogurts and cheeses because you can go to the supermarket and right beside the Omega Enhanced Eggs, you will see Omega Enhanced Cheeses and Yogurts and other dairy products all infused with Omega, many of them coming from fish, which I'll be honest, has a nasty aftertaste, whereas ours doesn't. Don Wood is a uh, former CEO with Arrowhead Water, a public company in Canada. Uh, Dawn is very interested in how the Omega opportunity will work with beverages. We've seen vitamin water. Why not Omega water? Peter Howes was, in fact, my boss at the Jim Pattison Group. We worked very close together in developing advertising campaigns throughout Canada. When I began to uh, build uh, Naturally Splendid with Brian Carson, we reached out to, to some close strength that we had. Uh, Peter is a... Um, he's an accountant by training and has been instrumental in guiding us along the way on the, on the side of our finances. Frank Siemens, uh, his importance should not be undervalued. He's the founder of Landmark Transportation, a trucking and logistics company that does 10 to $12 million a year annually. But we now have the uh, expertise to ship our products globally. Each one of these people bring a separate skill set to our company that allows for a stronger team, as do our directors. And with that, I can tell you that our current share price uh, says 41 here. The good news, gentlemen and, and ladies, if, if uh, we have uh, ladies listening as well, is that the stock is off slightly. We're in the low 30s, mid 30s. Our average volume is increasing. It's getting close to 300,000 uh, shares a day. Um, our low has been 17 cents. We did our IPO at 17 and a half, except for a couple of hundred thousand shares that traded under initial IPO price. We have always been above that, and I think that speaks volumes to the structure of the public vehicle. Fully diluted, we're just under 50 million shares with the exercise of some warrants. Uh, we will be above that. Our market cap is still under $20 million. We believe that this space will show, yeah, I don't think it's unreasonable. To, to project six, eight, ten times top line sales. We see this in other public companies and I encourage you to do your own research into Omega companies that are publicly traded and see what, they, what multiples they trade top line sales. And I'll give you an example. A company that we could um, I categorize as a functional food company called Annie's Organics uh, went public on NASDAQ in 2012. Uh, they were an $800 million market cap on $70 million in sales, and General Foods recently bought them out for $805 million, 10 times top line sales. That's a real uh, example of what the market is prepared to pay for functional food companies. Um, with that, I would like to thank everyone for, for listening today. Uh, Derwin, if there's any questions, I'd be more than happy to take them now. Thank you, Craig. Uh, what is your stock symbol in Canadian, in Canada, and in and what is the stock symbol in U.S.? 
Thank you so much. The, in Canada, we trade on the Toronto Venture, and the symbol is NSP, so Naturally Splendid Products, if you will. In the United States, it's NSPDF. Now, we were halted for 90 days while the Toronto Stock Exchange reviewed the transaction between Full Spectrum Labs and Naturally Splendid. Under regulatory law in the United States, the OTC actually suspends you, and we have to reapply for our listing. Uh, but it, I can tell you the halt was not a regulatory non-compliant issue. The issue with the Toronto Stock Exchange is that the deal was so complex and the technology so advanced that it took them three months to fully wrap their heads around it. And unfortunately, during that time, our listing in the United States became stale dated. If you're halted for more than 30 days, you get suspended. It doesn't come back trading as easily as it does in Canada. Our attorneys and our staff here are working diligently to get it up and running so it's DTC eligible in the United States. We expect that, that to happen in the next 20 to 30 days. Okay, uh, first question. How do you see naturally, spin, naturally Splendid expanding into Washington and the D.C. market, Washington, D.C. market? Well, I was talking Washington State, actually, um, and Oregon, and they are working uh, through regulatory marijuana laws right now, and they're more, two of the more progressive states um, as far as growing industrial hemp. Um, the Washington, D.C. market, uh, I haven't looked at it at all, to be perfectly honest. Um, right now, we are focused on Colorado. We're very interested in Tennessee and Kentucky. Um, and because of the geographic um, uh, proximity of Washington State and Oregon State to where we're located in Vancouver, we are very interested in, in expanding to those states. So for clarity, Washington, D.C. Uh, is not on my short-term radar screen, but Washington State is. Okay. Next question, how would you ship product to legal states without crossing illegal states? Do you know what? It's in a very interesting regulatory environment, and these are the nuances that many people don't understand, but we're very cognizant of. If you extract uh, cannabinoids from industrial hemp, you can, in fact, ship across state lines. So if we, if we extract or, or create CBD, infused products in the state of Colorado, but the, the cannabinoids or CBD comes from industrial hemp, you can legally ship outside the borders uh, or outside the state to all 50 states. If you um, extract the cannabinoids from marijuana, you are restricted in the state that you, that you um, extract the cannabinoid in, which in this case would be Colorado, which by the way is a $500 million a year opportunity right now. The marijuana business quickly growing to a billion dollars a year. So even if we only had access to that one state with, with cannabinoids that are extracted from marijuana, it's still an awesome opportunity. It's still something that is very commercially viable even though there are regulatory um, challenges operating within that state. Okay. Next question. When do you expect to have sales of the Omega line, and when will they have a CBD product to market? Okay, very good questions. Our, we are working right now with uh, POS in approaching their 600 global clients. We are on a, on a trip back to see them uh, early next week, and it is to identify and strategize the most, uh, the low-hanging fruit, if you will, of their 600 Omega clients, which clients would be best to be approached first. And I'm not looking for a 10% penetration of 600 clients, so there's 60 clients. I don't even need 1% penetration and get six clients. If I had four of their clients and they were to order what we would believe, for example, the dairy market is five to seven million dollars a year in Canada, you know, extrapolate that out to the United States, let's not even talk global yet, but if we were able to find one dairy client, one pet food client, one cosmeceutical client, and one feedstock client in the world of omegas, 
we would have a multi-million dollar top line revenue model. And we are looking at that right now. We are able to produce 20 metric tons of hemp omega every four days at the POS Biosciences right now. That value would be about half a million dollars uh, every four days. So that's what our uh, goal is to fill that capacity. When you are dealing in the global arena, two things can kill you. One is no, no sales, but two is having demand that you cannot meet. And that's why this partnership with POS is so vital. A $125 million facility with, with capacity to pr produce 20 metric tons of our product simply does not come along every day. And that, that debt would cripple a company like Naturally Split out of this day if we had to build a facility to provide the, the amounts that we would need globally once these products start to take, take hold. As far as the cannabinoid opportunity, David Race has spent the last week in Colorado. Uh, there's many opportunities down there. Uh, and where our interest lies is there's people uh, who are making uh, MIPS, uh, marijuana-infused products that are having dosage problems, consistency of dosage problems. We are looking to partner and license or put our technology on the back end to existing grow facilities where we can add our science and technology to add value added business propositions and product differentiators to existing products and formulations in the Denver market. So in both cases, we will have revenues before the end of 2015 and it could be much, much sooner than most people are anticipating. Next question, is financing an issue going forward? Do they need, uh, do you need to grow the, uh, do you need money to grow the business, the CBD business? No, we don't. Uh, right now, we have, our treasury is, is fine. We have uh, enough operating capital to see us through uh, for the foreseeable future in our burn rate. Um, we expect to partner with clients in Colorado that will produce immediate cash flow positive revenue streams. So we believe that if we wanted to go in and be modest and have a phase one facility, we're able to finance that internally. If we want to build a bigger facility, we would entertain additional means of financing. That doesn't always mean more share shares um, issued, which would, would be dilution. Of course, that's one of the opportunities, but the stage that we're at, there's many other opportunities to secure capital. That would include licensing and revenue uh, created from sales. Well, that looks like we're, we kind of ran out of time, but uh, any last comments? I would just like to thank everybody for uh, taking the time to, to listen to the Naturally Splendid story today. 2014 was the year of heavy lifting for Naturally Splendid. It was the one of establishing our retail lines, securing technology, developing it up to the commercial line. And 2016 into the foreseeable future will be years of growth. So the, our symbol once again is NSP on the Toronto uh, Venture Exchange, NSPDF. I apologize, uh, NSPDF on the, um, on the OTCQB. So I look forward to uh, hearing from you. If there's any questions, please, uh, we will try to reach out to all of you, uh, but don't hesitate. You can go to our websites, naturallysplendid.com. You will see links to Boreal, to Natera, and to Positive Effects. And lastly, once again, I'd like to thank everybody for their time today. And Derwin, thank you for, for creating the opportunity for me to tell the Naturally Splendid story.